Hello, I'm Dr. Yasser Janab, interventional cardiologist in the Iran Heart Center, presenting the case right ventricle perforation in catheter directed thrombolysis. Our patient was a 50 year old woman with acute dyspnea from four days before her presentation. She had history of lupus and hypertension. She also had history of lumbar surgery many years ago. On presentation, her respiratory rate was about 24 and oxygen saturation was about 88%. She also had a stable hemodynamics. Pulmonary CT angiography in this patient showed bilateral pulmonary embolism and significant RV dysfunction and also IVs reflux. You can see bilateral pulmonary thrombi, severe RV dilation, and IVs reflux. Echocardiography showed severe RV dysfunction with severe pulmonary hypertension and mild pericardial effusion. You can see the dilation of right ventricle and RVLE ratio is more than one. You can also see the increased pulmonary pressure. Our plan in this patient was catheter directed thrombolysis. Our access was from right femoral vein under ultrasound guidance. We used A1 catheter and a standard uh, thromo wire. At first, venography showed patent iliac and IVC veins. However, when we thought that we are in pulmonary artery, the injection showed that we are in pericardial cavity. The injection showed we have, we have perforated right ventricle and we have entered the pericardial cavity and you can see the dye in pericardial cavity. As I said, in this patient the hemodynamic was stable at this point. Uh, so what would you recommend at the next step? Do you recommend pericardial synthesis in this patient or do you recommend surgical intervention or we can go with conservative management. In this patient as the hem stable hemodynamics we selected the conservative management, the procedure is stopped, the catheter was withdrawn, uh, the hemodynamic was stable, serial echocardiography in cath lab showed no increase in previous pericardial effusion. So, after uh, about four hours, we started heparin infusion again. The incidence of ventricular perforation during percutaneous diagnostic and interventional procedures is extremely low, and possible factors for RV perforations are uh, a stiff catheter or obstruction in RVOT or thin walled uh, right heart due to uh, right myocardial infarction. The interventional procedure should be terminated in and uh, any anticoagulation should be immediately reversed. This may be sufficient in some patients with a small pericardial effusions to prevent hemodynamic deterioration. In summary, catheter-directed thrombolysis might be complicated by RV perforation and close conservative management could be an option in this catastrophe. Thanks for your watching.